Good morning, church. Hope you're all well this morning. So today we're going to be in Romans chapter 7, verses 14 to chapters 8, verses 8. Um, and there's a lot going on here. Um, it's so good once again. And I just continue to pray that God will open up our ears and our hearts um, and our eyes to see and hear what he has to say this morning. Amen. So... Paul is continuing on um, and talking about the law um, and talking about what the law could not do um, and speaking of something greater that has happened and that is ha- and it's continuing to happen in our hearts. Um, and he continues to talk about this problem of sin in all of us. Um, now, we've all fallen short um, of the glory of God and we need we needed a saviour. Um, so Jesus um, came um, in, in sinful flesh um, as a sin offering. It speaks about in Romans chapter eight, verses um, three. Um, and he talks about this. But before Romans chapter eight and um, him speaking about the life giving spirit that we are now able to walk in, um, He talks about um, this waging war that's happening in his mind between the the flesh and the spirit and how they're constantly um, in battle with one another, that they're hostile against one another. He talks about um, this um, all throughout Romans chapter 7, verses 14 to 25. And there's this recognition that he is... He is sinful and he is guilty against um, before the law. Um, and he says, um, what what wretched man am I who will rescue me from the body of death? And then in verse 25, so good, he says, thanks be to God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then with my mind, I myself am serving the law of God, but my flesh, the law of sin. So he recognizes that there is this battle that is constantly happening. He recognises that he is a sinner. He recognises that his flesh is constantly in battle with um, the spirit. He knows that the flesh, the law of sin is constantly in battle with the law of God. They don't go hand in hand. He recognises that. And that is what, that's something that's really important here because he's not saying, oh, if I can save myself, um, but he re- but he recognizes God. He he thanks God that there is something outside of me through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then, with my mind, I myself am serving the law of God. He recognizes something outside himself, never looking it within to fix himself. But he recognizes that. Listen, before the law, I am guilty, but I look beyond myself for something to help me something to save me it's not even it's it's literally the law of god which is so good and it goes on in verse um in chapter 8 verses 1 and he says therefore there's no condemnation um for those in Christ Jesus because the law of the the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free this is so important two key words condemnation and free so condemnation is is not to say he's not trying to say that you know there's never going to be a struggle we're not i'm not con- i'm not going to continue to um have this battle with the flesh and the spirit but rather so he recognizes that there is there is no defeat um there is no separation that it has been defeated sin has been defeated it death has been defeated and he recognized that there's no condemnation means that there's no separation between him and God that there's been a bridge that has been paved God has paved that way through Jesus Christ and the 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 key words that he continues to talk about through Jesus Christ through Jesus Christ the law of the spirit through Jesus Christ is because it's so important to recognize that there is something beyond, like there's something outside of us. It's never looking within. It's never looking um, elsewhere. But it's really highlighting that it's actually through Jesus Christ and that emphasis there, which is such good news for us this morning. And this word free, church, is also so important. We are free. We have been set free as in there is no power that is holding us down in the battle of sin. 
in the battle, in this battle against the flesh and the spirit. There is no power that is holding us and tying us to sin, but we have been set free through Jesus Christ. So we can look to the one that has set us free, that has won the victory. It's through him that there is power. It's through him that we have defeated sin. And Paul is not saying that, oh, you know, we'll never have any struggles. We're never going to struggle with sin ever. But he's saying that in the battle of sin, that there is no power that sin has over us because of what Christ Jesus has done. And that is why this is called, this passage is titled The Life-Giving Spirit because we have the Spirit now. It's by His grace that we have the Spirit, that we can flee from sin. And now it goes on to talk about Um, in verse 5 onwards to verse 8 for those who live accordingly to the flesh have their mind set on on things of flesh but for those who live according to the spirit have their minds set of the spirit um mindset of the spirit is life and peace there needs to be this trust um and this belief um to in order to to flee in in order we are called to be empowered by the spirit and walk in the spirit that is the route to life that is a route to peace that is a route to christ that is a route to holiness Um, and that is what god is calling us to do this is what paul is talking about in his letters that those who have the mind set of the spirit not on fleshly um desires not on um on the flesh or um um, earthly um, thinking, earthly things, but actually things above, um, that is where life is. That is the route to life. That is the route to peace. Um, and that is what Paul is talking about here. Um, we can try our best to do good on earth and, um, you know, work it out through doing good and good works, but and be this noble person. But ultimately, we are guilty before the the law we are guilty but it's through christ that there is no condemnation there there is complete freedom and we have won and we have triumphed over death we are we are not guilty in him before the law Um, and that is what is happening here it's this beautiful depiction of this battle but he says but thank god but thank god for jesus christ through him there is there is power to flee through him there is absolute life and peace and joy and that is what i wanted to share with you guys this morning and i pray that we are encouraged we truly are encouraged and i pray that we continue to walk in the spirit never giving way to our flesh never giving way to sin because truly that leads to death but we are called to live this life fully in Christ. Amen.